Well, good morning. Just want to welcome you this morning to our meeting and to this uh, this beautiful day that we have here. Um, I'm in Dorset in England and it is a beautiful sunny day. It is only a few degrees above freezing, but it is a beautiful, beautiful blue sky sunny day. Just want to thank you, uh, Femi and Nina, for for inviting me on to be able to share the word of the Lord this morning. And I just want to really have had it on my heart to share about words of knowledge this morning and do a little bit of teaching on words of knowledge. So welcome today, all who are listening, welcome. And so Father, we just welcome you, Holy Spirit, for this is all about you. It's all about you, Lord. God, we welcome you today. Holy Spirit, you are welcome among us. Lord, let your word run forth swiftly. Let it accomplish all that you have purposed it to do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. So today I'm going to give you some, some teaching tools on one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay, we're going to speak today on words of knowledge. Uh, words of knowledge. And prophecy in itself is made up of four main elements. Words of knowledge discernment, revelation and understanding, words of wisdom. Okay, so a word of knowledge, we're going to look at that today. A word of knowledge is fact-based. It's facts. It's when God shows you something through a supernatural revelation and it's information specifically from the Holy Spirit concerning a situation or someone's life or something that needs healing, etc., etc. It is a fact or facts that God is revealing in the spirit, so to, to your spirit. So words of knowledge will come to you in a, like a split second. Something that wasn't even in your thinking a moment ago is now being revealed to you. And this can happen to you in many, many various ways. There's the, the sensing of the inner spirit, you know, that inner man, and there's a sense that happens that God is speaking. There's maybe seeing it in picture form or vision form, or there's also the audible word of God, which is more rare because God normally, usually, mostly will speak on our inner man and in the inner spirit, spirit to spirit. Also, there's like reading where it's, it's like a screen in front of you, dreaming, visions, trances, God speaks in many, many different ways to us today. It's so exciting because he has created us with so many ways of receiving from him. And, and he just loves to vary how he speaks. He speaks to each one of us in, in sometimes the same way, but in many, many varied ways. So a word of knowledge is when God releases a specific word of revelation from the unseen realm of eternity, of his eternal dwelling, into the seen realm of your time. It is a Kairos word that comes into a Kronos moment. In other words, it is the right word at the right time for the right situation. Let me say that again. A word of knowledge is when God releases a specific word of revelation from the unseen realm to the seen realm of time, from his realm of heavenly eternity in through the spirit realm into our realm of time. And we receive that in our spirit. So it is a Kairos word that comes in a Kronos moment. In other words, the right word at the right time. And don't we love that God is the God of right moments and he's the God of right times. He's like, he, he comes when, when that moment is like so perfect, so good. And he, he knows that, that he, he has people that can hear him and see and understand. And when we have the spirit of God, if you're a believer today and you have the spirit of God within you, you have the ability to receive words of knowledge okay words of knowledge a word of wisdom is how we activate that word of knowledge okay so we have the revelation the word of knowledge discerning that it's God's voice saying okay Lord what is this who's this for 
And then the wisdom of God kicks in, that gift of wisdom, in how we release that word in relation to timing, places, people, all that information that's relative in that moment of time. So a word of knowledge, <clears throat> pardon me, pertains to uh, information, whereas a word of wisdom pertains to instruction. In other words, what to do with the information that you have received. In, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, and then verses 7 and 8, it says this. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware, but to each one is given the manifestation of the Holy Spirit for the common good. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit. The Apostle Paul received many revelations through words of knowledge from God. In 1 Corinthians again, chapter 2, verses 12 to 13, he says this, Now we have received, we, that is you and me, <clears throat> have received not the spirit of the world, hallelujah, we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. The same Holy Spirit that was in the Apostle Paul is now living in you. Why? So that we may know the things that have been freely given to us from God. That we may know. Why do we have the Spirit of God living in us? Because there is um, there, there are messages that come through, words of knowledge, words of wisdom that God wants to reveal through supernatural revelation to us the things that are given through God. So these things, it says here, these things we also speak, not in words, which uh, by man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches. <clears throat> so when we look at this scripture, we see that the Holy Spirit is in us, so the Holy Spirit is in you. Why? So that you will know things. So that you will know things. What things does he want you to know? He wants you to know information. He wants to give you information concerning the person next to you or the person you're going to meet in a few days time or the person in front of you in church or someone in a coffee shop or someone when you're out randomly shopping. He wants you to have your ears switched on so that you will know the things that he is revealing to you, not the wisdom of the world, but the wisdom that comes through the Holy Spirit. I think that is amazing that we can receive information from God. So <clears throat> like God is, is looking down, he is looking. So he sees people that need healing, that need encouragement, that need comfort, that need direction. So who's he going to look for to be able to release the, the word that will bring them life? He's looking for you. He's looking for you, he's looking for me. Those who have ears to hear and eyes to see. Those who have, whose heart is turned toward the Lord. Those who live in partnership with the Holy Spirit of God. Even Jesus, Jesus himself was such an amazing example of, of words of knowledge. You know, when we think about um, Jesus and the, the Samaritan lady, yeah? And she sa he said to her, you know, about her husband, she said, she says, uh, I do not have a husband. And Jesus said, no, you do not have one husband, but you have five. He had knowledge. He had words of knowledge that were flowing to him. Remember, he gave up his ability. He was solely dependent on the father. And the father was revealing to him these words of knowledge at a well where he's gone to get a drink. <clears throat> concerning this beautiful woman who was an outcast from her society, who came at a time when no one else would come in the heat of the day. And yet here was Jesus wanting to communicate with her, wanting to heal her, wanting to restore her, transform her. And he had a word of knowledge from the father. Father says, go to, go to the well because there's a woman there. And this is what I want to tell you about her because I want her to come to know me. 
and through her, revival is going to break out in her town. Come on. You don't know when <clears throat> Jesus speaks to you and, and he gives you a word for someone. What effect that word is going to have, not only on them, but on their family, on their community, on their workplace. The word of God runs like rivers. It's living waters, living waters. Water doesn't stay still unless there's a blockage. We don't want to be the blockage, guys. We want to be those who have the living waters flowing from our innermost being. Those words that the Lord is bringing, when we sense them, we're like, okay, Lord, what are you saying? Who is this for? What do you want to speak? What do you want to release out of this? What are you showing me here so I can release your heart over this one that you love? It's so exciting to be able to partner with the Lord. <clears throat> I have found that words of knowledge are, are, in my experience, have been predominantly for healing, either physical or inner healing. God will show something to do with um, someone's brokenness or something in their physical body that needs to be healed. So we want to <clears throat> be those who partner with the Lord with real sensitivity and real compassion for those around us. The Holy Spirit will, will give you revel <clears throat> revelatory words of knowledge concerning the need of a person or persons for healing. It indicates that God chooses to, to heal the person or the persons that have the condition. When God speaks a word of knowledge, it means that he has stepped into time to activate that word. So when we receive that word, we have to look around and say, okay, this is what I'm feeling. <clears throat> this is what I'm sensing. Who is this word for? Who needs this healing today? Who needs this restoration? Remember, it is a Kairos moment, an appointed time, a right time, a correct time. Words of knowledge also build faith. Build faith in the person who needs healing. Be, build faith in the person who received the word of God. You know, when, when you receive a word and someone says, that's for me, you know that you've heard from God and you know that right now this person is going to be healed and restored. That is such a beautiful relationship. So if I receive a word from God and there's a response to that word, I will pray immediately for that person. And then I would follow up and see how they're doing. So when we're giving words of knowledge, we want to be specific. So the more specific the word, the more faith it will build into people. So instead of just saying, I feel that there's someone here today with a shooting pain in their neck, we want to be specific. So we want to say, okay, I, I feel that right here, right here, someone is having pain in their neck and it's a stabbing pain. It's a sharp stabbing pain. Has anyone got that pain right now in this area of their neck? So we want to point to the area, be as specific as possible, keep asking the Lord for more information. And then when that person responds or those people respond, release the healing, release the healing over them and watch and see what God will do. <clears throat> so God will will give you words of knowledge anytime. It could be in the mid middle of a church service. It could be in your prayer meeting. It could be in your, your family group, your home group. It could be when you're out shopping. It could be when you just walk past someone, either in the street or at church or at work. Always be listening. Always, always be listening because God is always speaking. God is always speaking. In Psalm 139, it says that his thoughts toward us are more numerous than the sands of the sea. You know, and apparently if you hold one handful of sand in your hand, it is equivalent to over 10 
thousand, ten thousand grains of sand, which means that every moment, every moment, God is speaking hundreds of thousands of thoughts toward each person on earth. His thoughts toward us are more numerous than the sands on the sea. So <clears throat> let me give you a few examples. So one day I was ministering in a church when the Lord highlighted this lady to me, beautiful lady. But I saw her surrounded by darkness that was just pressing in around her. It's like she was in a cage and felt that she was unable to get out, totally trapped. And I was able to go down directly to this lady and begin to talk to her about what I was seeing. And I began with, I feel like you've been having a really hard time lately. And she began to just pour her heart out to me, pour her heart out. I said, I just feel you wonder when you can ever escape this. And she said, I feel like I'm trapped. And I said, the Lord showed me your struggle. He wants to come and minister and break this struggle off your life. Can I pray with you? And I prayed with her and she received incredible freedom. Another example, uh, my husband and I were with friends and we went out for coffee. <coughs> Pardon me. And as we were getting ready to leave, a woman and her husband came in. And as soon as she came in, I, I felt this, this cloud just over her. She came in carrying this atmosphere, carrying this this depression, this heavy heaviness. And as her husband went up to get coffee, we were leaving and I said to my husband, I, I need to go in. And he said, the lady in the corner? I said, yeah. And I went back in and I said, listen, I, I know you don't know me and uh, you don't know who I am and I don't know you, but when you came in, I felt that the Lord was showing me that you were carrying a really heavy burden. And I was wondering if you would let me just pray for you and just bless you today. And this lady began to break down in the middle of a coffee shop by the beach. Her husband came over and I explained who I was, introduced myself. And I said, you know, is it okay if I pray for your wife? And he said, yes, please. And she said, you know, I've, I've, I've wanted to take my life. I've wanted to take my life. And the Lord was able to touch that woman in the middle of a coffee shop, not knowing her, never met her before, and I've never seen her since. But I know that that woman's life was transformed that day by a word of knowledge that was given to me as I was leaving the coffee shop. People of God, be aware of the voice of God. Listen to him. Be aware of those inner sensings, those feelings, those stirrings in your heart. Talk to the Lord about them. Ask the Lord who they're for. Ask him to give you revelatory understanding of what you're sensing or what you're seeing. You may or you may not know who that revelation is for. Most often a word of knowledge is for someone present. Quite often you will know who it is for. Today, I can't see your faces, but I have words of knowledge that God has given me to release today, which I'm gonna release in a few minutes for you. The Holy Spirit may give you a word of knowledge for someone that you're gonna meet in the next day or two. But when you see them, that word will come forth again and you will feel it and you will sense it. And you will know that that word is for this specific person. Have your ears tuned. Don't miss it. They can't afford you to miss it. People need to hear that God loves them, that he sees them, and that he knows them. So we've, we've looked at you know, what a word of knowledge is, releasing a word of knowledge, examples of that. So again, it's just, does anyone have a sharp pain in the back of their left elbow, point to it, point to the area? If they respond yes and say, yes, I had a sharp pain in my left elbow, 
which so we're showing that this may be a word of knowledge indicating I'm just telling you now madam or sir that God showed me this and it could be an indication that God would like to heal you now because you have this condition would you like me to pray for you and if there is an openness pray for them bless them bless the socks off them bless them their family when you get an open doorway to pray for healing for someone pray for them pray for their family pray for every situation that god god would just let it flow prophetically from your inner man in partnership with the holy spirit in a meeting scenario if you're not the pastor or the gatekeeper <clears throat> the gatekeeper are people maybe that that are put in place that if you have a word that you will go to so unless you have authority to release words always always submit your words that you have been given to the proper authorities or the gatekeepers of that meeting and wait until you are released always honor those in authority over you or they may actually choose to release the word themselves don't be offended remember that together we walk together to build the history of the testimony of jesus this isn't about our platform it's not about our ministry or someone else's ministry it is always 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 about ushering in the kingdom of god and bringing in the love of god to those to whom he is speaking that they would see that they are seen and they are known and they are loved by God. Come on, isn't that true? Someone somewhere used to pray for you that you would be seen and known and loved of God. And here you are today. Here you are today learning about how to release that over other people. The testimony of Jesus in that person's life will become the spirit of prophecy for them to do it for someone else them to do it for someone else i was healed of fibromyalgia so for me if i see someone with fibromyalgia i'm like i'm on it i'm on it like a rash you know i'm like hey i got healed of that let me pray for you let me pray for you because i know god heals it and people are like yeah okay okay and we see god heals so many <clears throat> so revelation how do you receive it well it could be annoying, it could be annoying in your inner man, you know, such as Jesus had for the Samaritan woman at the well, that that knowing um, beforehand that she had five husbands. Oh, my gosh. I mean, can, I, can you imagine some of the words of knowledge that God has just waiting to show you concerning people around you of how much he loves them and how much he wants to touch their lives and how much he wants to transform them? Come on. It's exciting. It's exciting. So it could be a knowing um, in your spirit, a, a word that you've received <clears throat> that you know that you didn't have a few seconds before and it just pops in there, this knowing of something, some facts. It could be a feeling. You may have a sharp pain in some part of your body. One time I was ministering, teaching, and all of a sudden I got this pain in the last, the middle left side of my back. And I was like, oh my gosh, what is that? And I just, I said, does anybody have a pain in their left side, like the kidney area? And I had about 10 people put their hands up. So we just released the word of the Lord and, and just then said, you know, people around them, pray for them, minister to them. Anybody got 50% healing? Anybody got 80% healing? And people were being healed right there and then just by the word of the Lord, being sensitive to that word that God was bringing forth. So it could be a feeling, it could be a sensation, an ache, a strong emotion like fear or panic that God maybe wants to heal in someone. Um, I remember one time ministering to a young man and, and suddenly I felt like I, I had this tight metal band around my head. And I said to this young man, are, are you struggling with something mentally is it something that you're that i just feel this tightness around my head is, is it relevant to you and he admitted he was struggling with with depression and anxiety and we were able to minister healing into that area of stronghold 
in his life and set him free. Make sure the feeling is not your own. If it's your own condition, you can't judge it, you know, but it'll be something that appears right there and then out of the blue for someone else. <clears throat> you may see a mental picture such as a body part, a heart, a foot, an eye. You may see a, a picture of someone holding an arm. You may see a crutch, eyeglasses, a person walking with a cane. You may see a, a car accident. Um, so take a moment in that time, take the moment and say, Holy Spirit, number one is this you, what are you showing me? What are you showing me? Give me more revelation. What do you want me to do? What are you showing me? Give me more revelation. What do you want me to do? Another way that I see actually and hear from God is reading. So I, I see words in my mind. It's like like a screen comes across my, my eyesight and I and I see words. So God will speak words to me like a like a newspaper headline. So it could be just an impression of a particular condition or that the Holy Spirit has spoken this word to you, a mental impression. You may dream about someone or a situation, uh, someone with a health problem, or, uh, or you hear someone in your dream talking about a health problem. Quite often, words of knowledge are revealed as, as a mixture of so many of these different ways. We need to learn how we hear. What is it, what is it like for you to hear God today? How do you receive from God? You need to sharpen your, your, your glasses, your receiving glasses, and, and, and make sure that they're, they're, they're not muggy and they're not foggy, but that that, that line between you and heaven is, is clear. Heaven's voice is fully heard, fully understand, understood, fully received in your spirit. Practice, 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 practice. The more you work a muscle, the stronger it becomes. The more you practice words of knowledge, the more accurate and precise you will become. A word of knowledge for healing may come quickly, flitting through your mind, uh, more like a bird or a butterfly than a stationary billboard. It may be vague, tempting you to ignore it. Practice tuning in to the revelations. Speak them out. You have nothing to lose. You have nothing to lose, but other people have everything to gain. Everything to gain. It's how you grow. Practice. Be gentle. Don't be offensive. If you see something that's that's dark or heavy, try to speak it in a way of I see that I, I get a sense there's a struggle happening. Don't don't say, Oh, I see a black cloud over you and you're going to commit suicide. No. Or you or you're you're stuck in a cage and you say, hey, I just feel you've been struggling recently. Is that true? Is there anything I can do? Can I pray for you right now? The Lord just showed me your struggle. Always, always have a foundation of love and compassion for those around you. It's perfectly okay to admit you're nervous. It's perfectly okay to admit that, that you're not professional at this. It's okay to say that, you know, praying for the sick is new to you. It's okay. Don't be afraid. Don't let fear rob you of setting someone free and having the experience of witnessing that yourself. It's a great aid to evangelism. People that, that we have words for that don't know Christ are like, how did you know that? How did you know that? God sees you. He knows you. He loves you. It's amazing. And every time I teach on this, people become activated in words of knowledge. And I'm going to release that over you as we come to an end. I have a few words I'd like to release over you. The first word that, that the Lord showed me was uh, someone that was struggling or, or undergoing treatment for testicular cancer. Testicular cancer. If that is you, God wants to heal you today. If you're listening to this program today, God wants to heal you. This is a word from the Lord for you. This is not a, 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 a word for other people. If you're hearing this, this word is for you. If you have testicular cancer, I'm going to pray for you right now. Just want you to, to put your hand where it needs to go. 
And Holy Spirit, we just receive that word that you have released. And God, we release that word to bring forth life in Jesus' name. God, we rebuke the diagnosis of testicular cancer right now in the name of Christ Jesus. And we release life, life. We release a reversal, a supernatural turnaround. We command every sign, every symptom of testicular cancer to go right now in Jesus' name. Sir, we speak shalom over you. Shalom is the authority that breaks the power of chaos. And we speak it over you right now in Jesus' name. And we declare that you are healed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Torn right front of shoulder, right here. If that's you, I just release and just say, receive your healing right now. Receive your healing right now. Just put your hand on that place. Receive your healing right now in Jesus' name. It's on the right-hand side. Receive your healing right now in Jesus' name. Someone is in hospital. <clears throat> Someone that you know is in hospital with a brace-like device around their head. It's come from an injury in a car accident or a motorbike accident. God is saying he's going to be okay. This is a man. Go anoint him with oil and declare the power of the blood of Jesus over him. And I now prophesy life to that brain. We prophesy healing to those skull fractures in Jesus' name. We command all swelling to down and the bones to come back into alignment and into order in Jesus' name. Other one, right eye, the right eye bleeding into the eye that's caused a distorted vision bleeding into the eye that's caused distorted vision we command all pressure to normalize right now all bleeding to stop we declare you healed in jesus name i just want to bless you today for those that are watching if you've never received a word of knowledge i release this gift over you right now just receive just say to the Lord, I receive the gift of knowledge. I receive it, God. Open my ears to hear and my eyes to see. In Jesus' mighty name, I receive. I impart that to you. Just receive it in the name of Jesus. I bless you today. For that man in hospital, I bless you to be healed. Amen and amen. Femi and Mina, thank you for having me on today. God bless you. In Jesus' name.